run to the end of the dock. These were the words of a progressive school district who wanted to push the envelope on sustainable design in their new middle school. The original Valley View Middle School was constructed in 1981 and after only 30 years suffered from failing systems and overcrowding. 30 years isn't a long time for a school. But the school district knew that they had an opportunity to build a state-of-the-art, highly sustainable facility. At the time, there were several certification programs, but the most stringent of those was the Living Building Challenge. More a philosophy than a checklist, the Living Building Challenge consists of eight imperatives, petals, if you will. They include things such as beauty, health, energy, and water. There was already a lot of water on the existing site. There was consistent seasonal flow, as well as a healthy and robust wetland complex. And we knew we would need to control the stormwater on the site, and so it seemed to make sense to try and find a way to express the water on the site. In a typical school, 70 to 80% of the water that is used gets flushed down the toilet. And that water is the same quality as the water that we drink. So we started to do our research, and initially we encountered a bit of a wrinkle. Um, as it turns out, in Washington State, the waters, lakes, streams, etc., belong collectively to the public. And you aren't allowed to use them without a water right, or so it was at the time. They could be used for certain things uh, like irrigation or uh, power generation, but uh, you would have to go through a legal authorization at the state level to get permission to use them. Fortunately, at a critical time point in our design, an interpretive policy statement was passed that said that rooftop rainwater collection did not require a water right. So this was exciting news and we rolled up our sleeves and hit the ground running. We worked with our design team to determine the demand for the system, how many toilets, how many times a day our toilets flushed, how many students, how many days in the year, and balance that against the supply, the area of the rooftop and the average yearly rainfall. And we determined that we could accommodate a system that had a capacity of 100,000 gallons. We located 32 cisterns around the building and a large concrete vault under the front steps. The vault itself holds 70,000 gallons of water. It's a pretty simple system. It's gravity fed. The water is diverted from the roof down the downspouts into a filter at the top of each of the cisterns where debris such as leaves are separated out. From there, the water travels through a network of pipes under the building to the vault where it's filtered again before it's distributed to the building. If there's too much water, if we have a heavy rainfall winter, there's an overflow outlet that allows the water to go through a constructed stream in a parking lot rain garden. From there, it travels to a stormwater detention system under the football field, where it's carefully controlled and dispersed to the wetlands on site. If there's too little water, there's a sensor that switches a valve and connects it to the municipal water supply. The yearly savings for this system is not very much, and that certainly wasn't the driving factor for the school district. But I think the most telling piece is the volume of water that is conserved on a yearly basis. We created a system of interpretive signs to help explain the system, as well as other sustainable strategies throughout the school so that students and visitors could learn about those systems when they visited. And I think probably the most exciting expression of water on the campus is right outside the main student entrance to the commons. There's a three-story roof with several drains. The water cascades off the roof onto this canopy and then is diverted into the cistern. And when it's raining, it sounds like a waterfall. So it's a really great visual and audible reminder of the sustainable conservation that's occurring here. As architects, our hope is to create spaces that enhance teaching and learning, and an even greater goal is that the buildings themselves will teach.